a bomb, I think. For people to think that it was cool was um, was so unbelievably emotional and beautiful and and um, it's it's not only the success of the film which is great I think it's the fact that people connected to what we connected to certainly and Emily and I you know did this movie as a metaphor for parenthood and the fact that people picked up on all that stuff the fact that people loved all the detail of the first one um, and all the elements of survival and this idea of family was it was just really overwhelming. You know, the truth is I, I had no intention of doing a sequel. I don't think um, anyone thought that there would be a sequel. This was never designed to be a franchise. And yet I think that um, uh, the, the power of the world is the thing that makes it um, so possible to, to delve into it again. What I mean by that is I think most sequels have a hero or a villain and you have to build the world around them. Uh, and we have the uh, benefit of having the opposite be true. We have this world built and ready to play in, so you can drop whatever hero and villain you want into that world, and that's what's really exciting about it. The metaphor of the first one was parenthood. If you extend that metaphor, could I play with that metaphor longer? And I think there's an evolution, an innate evolution in the metaphor that really became powerful in my mind. What I mean by that is if the first one was about the promise you make as parents to your kids that as long as you're with me, I can keep you safe and everything's gonna be fine. That's a promise that every parent makes to their child and sadly has to be inevitably broken at some point in that relationship. And so I thought when that promise is broken, that's growing up. And so when you let your kids go out into the world on their own, that's what growing up's all about. And so that's what the metaphor of the second one became, the, the idea of these kids and this family dealing with loss, um, dealing with their safety net being taken from them. We definitely get to experience much more than we did in the first one, but my goal again, in order to respect the audience, was I didn't want to just do a movie that was bigger and flashier. I wanted to do a movie that, uh, the, the story and the characters dictated everything. So when you leave the path, yes, we're going into the unknown, yes, we're leaving the farm, but we're leaving the farm because the family has to leave the farm. So we're expanding the, the world, but the intimacy comes from the rules are still the same. One of my favorite things about the first movie was this uh, dichotomy of um, surviving versus thriving that uh, my character uh, was really content with just surviving, that there needed to be no flourish in life. It just was about putting your kids to bed and making sure that they're safe. And the mother's character, Evelyn, um, was that wasn't enough, that you couldn't just survive in a world. You had to thrive. You had to let these kids live a, a full life. And I think that the, the real fun part for me writing was playing with that dichotomy again in the second one, that basically, her idea of thriving may have put her husband in dire danger and sort of been one of the reasons that um, killed him. So I think that she's sort of investigating that theory and reinvestigating it and she sort of becomes the protector and the survivalist and certainly doesn't want to lose anyone else in her family. The beauty of Killian's character and what I was so excited when I wrote the character was um, he hasn't made a decision on how he wants to live his life, that there is so much fear in his life, so much loss in his life, he doesn't feel the need to be a part of any community. And yet when meeting this family, it's a real uh, conundrum for him because this family is of course something that uh, you want to be a part of, you want to help in any way you can. That is a very nuanced thing to have to play. Um, this sort of inner struggle is very difficult to play as an actor. You usually choose one or the other. Killian Murphy is without a doubt one of the best actors, if not the best actor I've worked with other than my wife. Um, and the kids, the kids are amazing too. But there was something about Killian, um, I had never seen that level of professionalism. I had never seen that level of preparation. His talent is, he's so good at all times. She faces <clears throat> probably the, the most intense challenges because she's completely on her own. Um, she, uh, you know, even though she has the answer and her hearing aid is a weapon, she still can't hear. So she's 
um, and in more constant danger even than uh, the rest of her family. She's a little girl alone in the world, which is, um, you know, was just such a, a really nice thing to show that this sort of, what I always loved about Millie's character is that she always had this innate sense of being a warrior princess. And what you get to see in this movie is that warrior princess thing comes at a cost because at the end of the day, you will still see her as a little girl and she's alone and she doesn't have anyone to help her. I don't see them as having uh, thought or, or intelligence and thinking things through. I think it's more about it, uh, overpopulation and it's just, it's become that they are strongly outnumbering us. And so it's, uh, it's one of those things where, the, it, again, I think it keeps the simplicity of the rules really strong. I've been a fan of Jimons forever. I mean, um, going back to Gladiator and Amistad and all these movies, but the movie that really blew me away of Jimons that uh, I never forgot and the reason why I cast him was In America. And I think that that role to me, there is something that, uh, about Jimon that is so innately emotional. You immediately watch any performance of his and you have a little bit of a, a choke in your throat. He, you're, you're ready to cry with him because he's such an open emotional person. Now that we know that the audience is um, accepting of this world and, and accepting of these rules and, and loving the way the rules play out in the world, we basically uh, answer the question that the audience asked of themselves, which is what would you do? Because I think that the family in the first movie has a, a leg up on the rest of the audience because they, have, they can speak sign language, they have all these systems created, and now none of those things are gonna save them. So they become just like everyone else, which is, every single step that they take is a potential tragedy. And I think that that's what's really exciting is that in the first movie there was a, there was a system that would keep you safe. In this movie, nothing keeps you safe. So the second movie really is, uh, you know, the, the, the rules of the first movie without a safety net. Anything can uh, be your demise. You know, it's a, it's a corny line, but if you like the first one, I think you'll hopefully love the second one because the, the first one is just a small slice of what's possible in this world. And then the second one, we're gonna show you what's happening in the rest of the world. So um, it's everything you loved about the first one, but there's, there's more to experience. Um, obviously, because they don't have the safety systems, every step that they take is much more treacherous. Um, the result of making sound here is a lot worse because there's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide to. So it's, it's a lot more exhilarating. <laughs>